Okay, welcome back. Good to see you're still with me. Okay, so we are finding the zeros of the function and we set the simplified fact or form of f of x equal to zero and found that x equals negative three and x equals two. Now it will appear on the graph like um, x minus one x minus 1, so x equals 1, it will appear like that's a 0 as well. But we know, actually we'll have to wait and see if it does. We'll just take a look. Because um, it might not, now that I think about it, because the point was at 1 comma negative 4. So um, let's use the graphing calculator and then sketch the graph on this grid. So grab your calculator. Okay, so we put this function, the original function, x cubed minus 7x plus 6 over x minus 1 in the calculator. Did you remember brackets around your numerator and denominator? Good. Now let's go zoom standard 6 to set it back to normal. And there we go. So as we kind of figured, we ended up with a quadratic once we simplified it. And if you'll notice, our zeros are negative 3 and positive 2. Okay, so our graph actually looks something like this and our zeros of negative 3 and positive 2 are showing up and it looks like a parabola even though it's starting off as a cubic in the numerator. Okay and our hole in the graph, where is our hole in the graph? At 1 comma negative 2. So right here and we should really erase that so that the um, hole is more pronounced. Okay so that hole has coordinates of uh, 1 comma negative 4. Okay so there we go. There's our graph, kind of sloppy, but um, it's got our zeros, it's got our point of discontinuity, and good. Let's look at the next page. Okay, so example number two, our last example, uh, we've got the graph of the rational function f of x equals, and you'll notice we have a cubic polynomial on top, and a quadratic polynomial in the denominator. So let's think about that. If you were to divide that, what would we be left with? What kind of function? Well, x cubed divided by x squared is basically just x. So that's why they're saying it's a straight line um, if we were to divide that. So the graph would appear to be a linear function with two points of discontinuity happening from the denominator, I'm assuming. Now, the only way that could happen is if those same two factors in the denominator are also in the numerator. So Part A, algebraically determine the equation of the straight line. So we have to divide these. Now we could use synthetic division or we could use um, long division. But what we could do first is factor that denominator to make sure we have one of the factors and then divide it in. Okay, so um, why don't you guys pause the video and go ahead and factor that with whatever method it works for you, uh, either my uh, funky weird modified decomposition or guess and check, whatever works. Okay, pause the video please. Okay, so we should have gotten 2x plus 5 and x plus 1 as our two factors. If you're have, having trouble factoring that, please go back and watch the videos on factoring in one of the first, uh, one, first or second unit, I think. Okay, so we are now going to do synthetic division to divide one of those factors in. Now, we don't want to use... Um, this would turn into x being negative 5 halves. We don't want to use a fraction with synthetic division, so we're going to use our linear factor. So that one, x plus 1 equals 0, so x equals negative 1. So we'll put negative 1 here. Our coefficients in descending order, 2, 1, there's a 1 in front of that, negative 16, and negative 15. Okay, now let's uh, do synthetic division. And actually, if you want to do this um, yourself, just pause the video and then um, when you're finished, resume. Okay, let's run through and do this. Carry the 2 down, multiply negative 1 times 2, negative 2. Add, so negative 1, 1 plus negative 2. Okay, then multiply again. Negative 1 times negative 1 is going to be positive 1. We add negative 16 and positive 1, negative 15. Multiply negative 1, negative 15 is going to be positive 15. And add again, we get 0. Good. So that worked out nicely. All right. So now we're left with 2x squared minus x minus 15. And we also have our factor from here, which was x plus 1. Okay. So we're going to factor this quadratic um, again. Now we already know that one of the factors is going to be 2x plus 5. So we might as well go ahead and write that. 
and then figure out what the other one would be. 2x times x gives us 2x squared. 5 times what gives us negative 15? It'd have to be negative 3. Do a little check to make sure we get the inside function. The outside is negative 6x, 2 times negative 3. And the inside is positive 5x, so that would give us negative x. And there we go. So let's rewrite this. We have now f of x equals x plus 1, 2x plus 5, x minus 3. There's our cubic polynomial factored. And on the bottom, we have 2x plus 5 and x plus 1, also factored. OK, so read the question again. <laughs> what were we doing? It was so long ago. Algebraically, determine the equation of the straight line. OK, so knowing that, let's first do our restrictions. 2x plus 5 can't equal 0, so x can't equal subtract the 5, divide by 2. And from here, x plus 1 can't equal 0, so x can't equal negative 1. So we have those restrictions. Now we can cancel off our common factors. And we are left with f of x equals x minus 3, where x cannot equal 5 halves or negative 1. And there we go. That's the equation of the straight line um, for our original rational function. So it should look like a linear function, the same as x minus 3, except with holes in the graph at 5 over 2 and negative 1. OK, so determine the coordinates of the points of discontinuity. Well, we know here's our simplified function, f of x equals x minus 3, where x cannot equal 5 over 2 and negative 1. If we substitute in, say, we'll start with the negative 1, negative 1 minus 3, we'll get the y-coordinate of the point of discontinuity at x equals negative 1. And there we go. So f at negative 1 is equal to negative 4. There's one POD, point of discontinuity, negative 1, comma, negative 4. OK, then we do it again for f at 5 over 2. Oh, why did I write that as a negative? OK, 5 over 2 minus 3. OK, common denominator of 2, so 3 would become 6 over 2. And we would end up with 5 minus 6, so negative 1 over 2. So f at 5 over 2 equals negative 1 half. So our other point of discontinuity is going to be 5 over 2 comma negative 1 half. And there we go. There's our coordinates of the holes in our graph, or the points of discontinuity. OK, make a rough sketch of the graph using it, uh, so basically without the calculator. OK, so we want to graph y equals x minus 3, OK, because that's our simplified form. Think y equals mx plus b. Our y-intercept, b, is negative 3. So that's going to be down here. OK, so our y value, y intercept is negative 3. Our slope, the number in front of x, is 1. So it's got a slope of 1. So it's going to look something like this. OK, but I'm going to erase that in a second because I need to put the holes in the graph. So let's go ahead and put the holes in the graph. OK, holes happen at negative 1, negative 4. So if that's negative 1, we should have a hole in the graph right here, negative 1, negative 4. And also at 5 over 2, which is like 2.5 and negative a half. So somewhere in here, we would have 5 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. And there we go. Now we just want to draw our, that's supposed to be a straight line. Use your imagination. OK, there we go. So we've got holes in the graph represented by open dots. And otherwise, it's a linear function. And that would be our graph of y equals f of x. All right, so hopefully this is starting to make sense. You can check this on the graphing calculator um, to make sure we have that right. But there we go. You are ready to do the assignment now. Hopefully it all makes sense. And uh, thanks for listening.